I'm delighted to welcome today Julian Robus, who is the Onion Master. And Julian, you are the happiness and stress-free living mentor. Welcome. Hi, thank you for having me, Elaine. Most welcome. So what is, uh, your, your name in, in, intrigues me, and, and I'm sure listeners want to know, first of all, what is the Onion Master? How did you get that name? Where, where, where does it come from? So it all came about accidentally. This was never meant to be a business. Um, it was only ever me trying to get rid of my own stress, anxiety and depression. Um, and somewhere along the way, I cottoned on to the fact that it was a bit like peeling an onion. So if you take a three-year-old, three-year-olds are happy, right? You don't have to teach them to be happy. They just come out of the box like it. Uh, excuse me for putting these on. It stops me getting migraines from the screen. Um, and um, the three-year-old is happy. They're kind, happy, loving, trusting little souls, right? Don't judge anybody. Just go with the flow. And I've got four grandchildren. Um, and I saw how they were growing up and how they, how they changed as they got older. And then I realized one day that society steals our happiness and starts throwing all these layers on top of us that we never chose. Um, so we don't have to do anything to be happy. All we need to do is take the layers back off and it just pops back up on its own. Mm. And my company was originally called Calm and Present Training because I was going to go into corporates and help people um, after I freed myself from stress, anxiety and depression. And um, I was watching a TV one day and there was a thing on about uh, teenagers in this country being prescribed depression medication, which causes suicidal tendencies. It was it was heartbreaking program. And um, I sat there afterwards and thought, no, this program is for young adults and teens, because if they can learn these skills at an early age, they never struggle with stress, anxiety and depression like so many of my generation has. Um, so I was talking to my accountant the following day and I said, look, Colin, I think I need to change the company name. And he said, yeah, OK, why? I told him all about it. And he said, have you got any ideas? And I was squiggling, um, I'm always doodling. And I looked across and on the piece of paper was an onion with a heart in the middle. So I said, well, I said, I've got an onion with a heart in the middle. And he burst out laughing. And he said, that's happy onion, mate. And I'm like, no way. He said, yeah. Um, so then we looked at it. So happy onion could be a Chinese restaurant. So what do people want? Like people want to live happily. So I've got the live and the happily, but the onion is the one that's blocking it in the middle. So it became happy onion living. Um, and, and that's where it came from. And then I was talking to a friend the other day. He's a big international branding guy. I've always struggled for what do I call myself an inner peace mentor or whatever. And he said, you're the, you're the onion master, mate. And that stuck. Um, and so, yeah. It intrigues people. They ask, what the hell is that, right? <laughs> um, and then as soon as you mention it's it's about taking the layers off, everybody just gets it. And you take the layers off and then you have um, happiness and stress-free living. If you what, So I help people take the layers off to get the happiness back. And then I give them the missing skills or the forgotten skills. Uh, I found this stuff. I struggled for years. Um, I'd been into personal development for 23 odd years, but none of that helped. Um, I'd got to the point in 2008 where I didn't want to live anymore from too much stress, anxiety and depression. I just couldn't cope, which made no sense because I had everything. And I mean everything. Um, amazing, well-paid job, beautiful wife, two great kids, nice little house and a tiny bit of money in the bank. There wasn't anything else. You know, people would give their right arm for what I had. Um, but I didn't want to be. I just couldn't cope. So I started looking further afield. I grew up in Germany and I'd seen a few people commit suicide out there. Um, and it's really not nice for the people that are left. And I remember looking at my girls thinking, no, I can't do that. There's got to be a way out of this. And I've never believed in, in doctors or drugs or medication, never drunk alcohol. Um, so I had to find a natural way. And um, I started looking into NLP, EFT, life coaching. Uh, yoga I did a reiki one certificate not just look at it but full-on get into all these things and they're all great but they didn't give me what i wanted i wanted to know how to be calm and at ease from when i got up to when i went to bed and uh, good old youtube um started suggesting uh some of some enlightened masters and i came across Eckhart Tolle and then dr hawkins and then Sadhguru, and i quickly realized that these guys had the knowledge so i started working on myself 24-7 self-inquiry, thousands of hours of deep meditation. 
And bit by bit, I started discovering the pieces of the puzzle to understand the real root causes and solutions for what we call stress, anxiety, and depression. Um, because I'm, a, I'm an engineer by trade originally before I became a meditation instructor. And what I realized was that whatever label we've been given or we've given ourselves, so stress, anxiety, depression, emptiness, sadness, guilt, regrets, whatever it is, it's actually only thoughts and feelings, right? And nobody ever teaches us what thoughts and feelings are, why they come up to help us funny enough and how to get rid of them. Um, and that's what I discovered. Um, the whole journey, if I'd known, I probably wouldn't have started, but the whole journey took nine years. Um, and one of my mentors, Master O, had always said to me, you don't help anybody until you've helped yourself. So I kept away from helping anyone, even though I had all the qualifications. And then in 2017, I think it was, I was walking the dog one day, bumped into a neighbour. How's it going? Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, all good, he said, but my wife's not so clever. I said, oh, what's the matter? Well, she's got stress, anxiety, depression. Um, she's not been out of the house for three months, she keeps having panic attacks, and she's got OCD. And I said, oh, dear, that's not good. And I said, look, I'm a meditation and stress reduction instructor. Why don't you send her down and I'll see if I can help. And she turned up on a Friday lunchtime and... All I was going to do was teach her some stress reduction techniques and how to meditate. Before I knew it, I was teaching her all the stuff I'd taught myself for nine years, right? Um, and off she trotted, and she came back the following Friday, different person. And I remember thinking, oh, my God, what have I done, right? It's going to be a big up and a big down. Second week, more improvements. Third week, more improvements. Fourth week, she rocks up. Oh, she said, I went to see my mental health team today. I said, pardon? Didn't tell me. Oh, yeah, I've been seeing them for three or four years. She said, but normally we pull up. My husband leaves the engine running. I'll go in, have a panic attack, come straight back out, get in the car and go home. So I said, OK, so what happened? Well, she said, I walked in, sat down and the woman said, what are you doing here? And she said, oh, I met this guy called Julian. He taught me what thoughts and feelings are, why they come up, how to get rid of them. And she went, whoa, we haven't got anything like that. Love you. Better go and see him. Yeah. Um, I think we did nine sessions and she completely turned her life around, um, changed the whole family a dynamic. And then and my life's always revolved around the most unbelievable coincidences, people would call them. And then a guy family from Switzerland and then a lady from America and a guy from America. And they all started getting these unbelievable results really quickly. So I'm now down from originally I was teaching people this stuff in sort of nine or ten sessions, but now we're down to five. Um, and the results people get are unbelievable. And for the longest time, I couldn't figure out why. And then it dawned on me, when I teach, I use all these little props. So this is a squeezy brain, right? Um, so th the normal way of thinking in psychology and all this stuff is they're all trying to fix a broken or dysfunctional mind. But the mind is the problem. And what my techniques were doing, they were pushing the mind to one side and reconnecting us with what I call original self or authentic self, true self, whatever you want to call it. And the minute you do that, the mind goes from being a tyrannical dictator or a slave driver, right? how many people are slaves to their minds, and it becomes a faithful servant instead. Um, so it all came about accidentally. Um, I'm now writing a pocketbook and a, and a textbook. And... Um, I've made this little bracelet, which people use to keep on track. So you read it every morning, you put it on, and then if your day's not going straight, you quickly have a read and go, ah, that's what I'm not doing. And it just puts you back on track. Uh, so it's a, it's a self-empowering way of getting your happiness back and keeping it, if you like. But we're never taught, just like we're never taught finances in school, we're never taught proper health or nutrition in school. Um, we're not taught how to stay happy and live life with ease. So that's that's the program that's come about. Brilliant. You you mentioned thoughts, feelings, and actions. Um, that's the the um sort of mantra that I was taught about in the in the 90s. Um I've had the pleasure of being trained by personally by Bob Proctor, um, who sadly died a couple of years ago in his 90s. And um he he taught me a, a graphic. I'm a, a, a visual person, so seeing things help, helps things to go in with me. Yeah. And um, uh, if you imagine the, um, do you remember the old um, the saint, the, the old television program? The the saint. Saint. Yeah, I know the, the stick man. Stick man. Yeah. yeah, 
Yeah. So the Bob Proctor uh, stick man, just say for the benefit of the listeners, you you so you have your circle above, which is the head, yeah. then a circle below, which is the the body, and then you know sticky out arms and legs. So if you imagine an, a line across the nose, above that is your conscious brain, below that is your subconscious brain, and then whatever's going on in there affects your feelings and your actions. And so if you're not getting your um, what what you want from something, then just trace back what were you feeling what, th- that made you take the action. What we what were your thoughts and so on. So that's how I, I that's how I remember it on the Bob Proctor's stick man. But with your with your program, you, you haven't you also got a game that you're developing as well? Yes, you? yeah. So um, originally it was just going to be a, a textbook, but I kept thinking, how am I going to get this out there in a way that teenagers and young adults can engage with it? And if they're still at school in the way that teachers can't put their own junk into it and, and mess it up. Mm-hmm. And then a bunch of coincidences later, I was talking to a friend and she went, there was a lady on a network and she was, she's a, a game maker. She makes card games and it was like, that's it. Mm-hmm. So there's going to be a card game. There's going to be a board game. There will eventually be an online version and there's going to be an app. But for the time being, it's the bracelet and 13 short videos so anybody can buy them. So if your parents and you're concerned about your kids, you get one of these, you watch the videos and you can immediately start helping yourself feel better. Uh, I mean, some of the techniques that I've, that I've developed over the years, you literally can feel calmer and happier within a few minutes, which everybody will tell you is not possible until you do it and you go, oh my God, this works. Um, I think I showed you once, right? Um, you did, yes. Yeah, the hand one and the thigh. That's hand. it. Yeah. yeah. So the hand, the hands up, hands down technique, as I call it, yeah. um, which completely goes well. It's just unbelievable, right? Yeah. But within minutes, you feel better because all thoughts are. I'm sure you know this, Elaine, but thoughts are energy, right? Yes, absolutely. And because of the old animal brain in the back of the modern human brain, it's like a V12 and a cart horse, mm-hmm. um, and they're not compatible. So there's a misunderstanding there. And what happens is as we grow up, um, I I use the dinosaur, that's the fight or flight, right? Um, And what happens is we accidentally start putting stuff in what I call the volcano. So all of the negative thoughts, feelings that we suppress end up in here. And then somebody will say something to you quite right harmlessly and you just blow up and rip their head off, right? And then you feel guilty for doing it. And then you put even more stuff in your volcano. Mm. So what my program does, it helps you take the excess pressure out of your nervous system. And the minute you do it, happiness pops back up, right? Because it's being masked by all this negative energy that's sitting in your system. So um, when it comes to the volcano, the volcano theory is uh, take empty the volcano find out how you accidentally filled it uh, and stop stuffing it. So you, you smolder it, as I call it. So you're constantly letting it, you're letting all this negative stuff go without harming yourself or anyone else. Um, and then, of course, all you need is the, the tools that we aren't taught that have been known for thousands of years in the East. So India, China, Japan, they've all known this stuff for thousands of years. Um, I'll just put it into a simple system that anyone can use to live life with ease. So there's no need for anyone to struggle if you've got the toolkit. So I call it the happiness for life toolkit. Um, And you get to understand yourself. You get to understand thoughts and feelings. You get to understand other people. And that takes all the stress out of it. Hence Mm. the stress free living. Brilliant. The the understanding of other people is really important in the work that I do with the disbehavioural profiling. When we understand ourselves and we understand how to manage ourselves, which is which is what you're talking about, then also recognising the difference with other people and then how we can manage that relationship. So it starts with us, doesn't it? And it's, it starts from within the side of us. It, it all starts here. And if you, if you look at the world, the happiness recipe we've been given is, is broken. Well, it's not even broken. It's a lie, right? So the happiness recipe, recipe I was taught was get good grades, yeah. right? go to university, get a good degree, get a great job, a well-paid great job, mm-hmm. right? Um, find a perfect partner get a big nice flash car a big house and loads of holidays and you'll be happy Mm -hmm. how many sports stars film stars musicians 
they've got all the money in the world, they've got the big house, they've got the fame, and they go from one rehab to the next. Yes, yeah. Because they're not happy. So we're taught, almost brainwashed, to look outside for happiness, but it's actually in here. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and the minute you come in here and find it, you don't need all that other stuff. Um, okay, if you've got it, fair enough. But the difference it makes just to know how this is all set up and how it works, because these, bob- these bodies are just mammals, right? So we've got a mammal with an advanced brain and the two just don't quite connect. Um, and we're never given a human instruction manual on how to manage this thing. So it's like you're landing from Mars and somebody gives you a bicycle and you've got a rucksack. So you don't know what the bicycle is for. So you might hang the rucksack on the handlebars and push it along because it's easier. But you wouldn't know how to ride the bike, right? And here we are with the most advanced brain on the planet, supposedly. And nobody teaches us how to use it. Mm. Um, so my book is basically a human instruction manual for staying calm, happy and living life with ease. Brilliant. The, I've found, I don't know about you, Julian, but I've found the older I get, the less I do. So the, the quieter I am, the more I'm achieving because I'm not running around like a silly thing. I'm not chasing my tail. I'm not trying to fit everything to please everybody else and maintain standards that are false. So I've, I've all those things that you rattled off, you know, the, the big house and the fancy cars and the, you know, big salaries and all the rest of it. It is a complete and utter myth because we tend to then live to our means and then we we get in a trap where, you know, we've got the big house, but then we've also got the big, big mortgage. So therefore you're under pressure to to thrive even more, which means we don't see our children because we work, work, work. And, you know, that's what happened to me. And um, it's it's very um, easy to go along. So I, I say to people, don't watch television. I've not watched television for over 20 years, 25 years. I've not bought a newspaper listen to the radio or anything like that I'm not a complete dinosaur um, and I do know what's going on through the internet and friends and so on but it's all false isn't it, it's, it, it we're, we're we've been brought up to believe lies that we think are true because when we learn this stuff between zero and six the mind at that point is in a hypnotic state it's completely open and everything it sees goes in yeah so, um, I've got a guy down the road lovely chap I call him Mr. Bouncy Feet. You ever seen one of these people that sort of bounce as they walk, right? If you look at his kids, they all do it as well. Because in the zero to six mode, their brain was open and they were learning, well, that's how you walk. So that's how yes. we walk, right? Yes. And that's how you eat and that's how you relate and everything else. Mm. So we've got all these programs we never chose and we're going through life with them. Um, and society is great. There's, there's what I call ancestral dysfunctional programming the stuff that gets handed down generation after generation. So if you took um, if you took some Israelis and some Palestinian children and they were playing in their swimming trunks in a room at four years old with toys, they wouldn't discriminate against each other, right? But as soon as they grow up, they will hate each other and start bombing each other. That's just dysfunctional ancestral programming. Um, no matter what color, age, religion you are, you've got two legs, two arms, we're the same species and we're the only species that goes around killing itself for money and profit. Right. Um, so you're right. So we get, we get poisoned if you like between the zero to six years. And then we, we get to 40 years old. I was 45 when I lost the will to live. I had everything, but I didn't want to be here. Right. And I kept thinking this, I've got everything. Why am I not happy? because I was taught to look outside in the world and get the big house and the beautiful wife and the loads of money. And when you've got it all, then what? Um, And it's shocking um, what's being done to us as a society, but we're completely innocent because it's done at an age when we don't even know what's it's being programmed. Yeah. We're conditioned by other people's feelings and their actions by the environment and the whole bit. Um, yep. In the work that I do with the, with the profiling and the health, um, I talk about Hippocrates and, you know, identifying the different humours um, with people, which is the, the, the personalities, the modern, modern partners is the personalities. Yep. Um, but it's, it's, it's all t- to do with conditioning and how, how we are conditioned at a subliminal level. We don't know it's happening. And then when we wake up to these um, situations, um, so 
in my in my world, seven is is the lid. I I say to people, be by the time you're seven, the lid is on. You're pretty much who you are going to be. Which well, you're seven, which, right? The program's in and off you go. That's how you exactly. stay. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Until you get to the point where there's so much suffering, something causes you to go. Hang on a minute. Yes. Everybody's not miserable like me. What have they got? I haven't got. Right. Yeah. Um. And I don't know about you, Elaine, but my life's always been we're all guided by consciousness if you like or by the intelligence of the universe whatever you want to call it but we don't see it mm -hmm. um and i started to i started to notice little things and the little things led to bigger things and gradually over the years i worked out what was going on um and um yeah it's all there but it's it's almost hidden if you like mm -hmm. and everybody's running around like robots because we're all programmed like r2d2 Yes. Um, no, C3PO. Um, right. We're, we're all programmed and we don't know it. So we're run by programs we have got no idea we're programmed with. Yeah, it's scandalous. Absolutely scandalous. Yeah. So your your book, your games, your videos, your bracelets, are they all available now? No, um, I've been ill for a long time. So I'm only just getting my act together. My body's just starting to work properly. So bracelets available. So what I'm doing to help young adults and teens and parents is bracelets available there's going to be 13 short videos and a, and a little pamphlet and that gives them the tools to immediately start feeling better so there's half a dozen techniques you're feeling stressed or anxious whatever it is you first read the happy only description of what anxiety really is and why it comes up and then you use each of the techniques so you score it one to ten say say you're ten anxiety you do a little technique and it drops you to two so you write down number one, right? That really works. And then you try number number two technique and that only drops you to five. So you end up with a little tiny list you can keep in your pocket um, because the mind is great at forgetting. So uh, the, the mind wants to stay in control, right? That's the shark. Um, so you try each of the techniques and you write yourself literally a little map. So the next time you're feeling it, you get the piece of paper out and go, right, last time I used number one, it was really good. And within minutes, you can feel better. Um, oh, yeah. And actually, for anybody that's feeling stressed and they want to take some pressure off, if you go to my website, there's a green button and it's a, a free video and it teaches you a de-stress technique, which is incredibly powerful. What is your website, Julian? Uh, website is www.happyonionliving.com. Brilliant. And you mentioned anxiety, what, what it is. What's your definition of anxiety? Feelings are just sensations in the body, okay? Now, because of the society we live in, the mind can't tell the difference between something real and something imagined, okay? The mind originally is just a device and it's designed to keep us alive long enough to reproduce. As I said earlier, we're all mammals. And if you look at every living thing, if there's a bird on the grass and you walk up to it, it'll let you get so close, um, right, so there's a bird on the grass, I've only got a chicken, but yeah. um, if there's a bird on the grass, it'll let you get so close and then it thinks, oh, I'm not comfortable with this and it flies off, right? Well, it's trying to protect itself because its base program is survive long enough to reproduce, right? Um, and if there's a beetle, if you're gardening and you've just been gardening, I know, um, and you lift a rock and there's a beetle there, it doesn't know you want to squash it, but just in case it crawls away. So we're programmed the same. Um, so what happens to us is if you look at the TV listings, for example, um, I'm in the UK and the TV listings, probably 90% of it in the evening is killing this, murder that, what it, it's all conflict, right? So because the mind can't tell the difference between something real and something imagined, the body, the mind goes into fight or flight and the body ends up in fight or flight. So fight or flight means that you're ready to run or you're ready to fight for your life. So if you're the intelligence of the universe and you've got to protect this thing called a human and it's got to fight or it's got to run, it doesn't need digestion at that time. So that gets turned off. It doesn't need an immune system at that point because that gets turned off to save energy. And the heart rate gets pushed up in order to give the body strength to either run or fight. So because the input that we experience in the so-called Western or Western advanced world so much of it is negative and the mind can't tell the difference between something real and something imagined. The mind stays in fight or flight, so therefore the body's in fight or flight. And now you've got a whole society 
because fight or flight is fear basically right so now you've got a whole society with high blood pressure stomach problems and anxiety and all that negative energy is stuck in your system it's stuck in your volcano so by the way whether you've got stress anxiety or depression in your volcano once it's in there it's just energy and i was quite surprised when i was developed some of the techniques on myself and then showed, showed them to other people whatever they come in the door with stress anxiety depression whatever the minute they take the pressure out of their volcano they all go and anything that's released in that manner i'm a meditation teacher by profession if you like anything that's released in that manner is gone gone not just as long as you don't restuff it so you need the tools not to restuff it again it's gone and people say oh, i can't believe that worked i feel so much better and the fact that there's less pressure in your volcano life automatically becomes easier so um as i said everybody's trying to fix a broken or dysfunctional mind but the mind is the problem so you take the pressure out of your nervous system because it's just energy and then you have a new set of tools for living life with ease. you understand yourself you understand other people you understand the world and you just flow through life like you did when you were three years old Brilliant. I've um, I've pretty much sailed through my whole life. Um, I've, I've twisted and turned and ups and downs and all kinds of things. But I'm generally one of these irritating people. And I've, in fact, family members accuse me of being too positive. <laughs> um, and um, not, not everybody can be as positive as me, despite stuff that's happened to me. I just I kind of bounce up. Our personalities are all different and some people are more prone to depression, anxiety, etc. And um, yeah, it's, it all goes back. It all goes back to the, the, the first early years. Yeah, I call it acquired personalities. Right. Yes. Yeah, it's a good description. Yeah, it's not even our stuff. It's somebody else's belief system and somebody yeah. else is this and somebody else is that. But I had a what the world would call a very unfortunate childhood. And what I didn't know was if you have an unfortunate childhood, you've automatically got a small volcano. Mm. So that predisposed me to stress, anxiety and depression later in life. And thank God it did, because if I hadn't got into the state I was in, I wanted to kill myself, um, this program would never come about. Mm. Um, and I never expected it to start helping people the way it does. Yeah. And, and that's the thing as well, isn't it? People don't seek guidance or help. Um, because we're not taught to ask for help it's a it's a bad thing to ask for help you should be able to you know the british stiff up a lip you know just just crack on with Always it don't cry man up code all that nonsense yes. yeah. yeah absolutely yeah. i think it's gone a bit too far the other way at the moment and we, we seem to have a lot of um jelly like whispery um views on things um so i think i'm sure we will balance out from being roughy tufty now to 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 jelly like i'm sure at some stage there'll be a, a balancing out but at the moment it's all a bit concerning the last place i would send if i had school aged children the last place i would send them would be to school to learn all this nonsense now we know what they're doing is packing the kids um into a into a situation where you put up you shut up you sit down you don't argue with the teacher the teacher knows best well actually some of the teachers are barely old enough you know to they only just start of school themselves some of them yep well not just that your program to sit down shut up and not ask questions and not question authority right mm -hmm. yeah um, and look at the mess the planet's in yeah because we've got basically egomaniac psychopaths running the planet and nobody's questioning it mm um so yeah lucky enough what my daughter's taken to she qualified as a teacher and then the first thing she did was leave two years later because of all the red tape and everything else and she couldn't put up with what was being done to kids mm. she homeschools her kids right mm. um but what happens elaine is we go out into the world we stub our toe a bit we start to get anxious or stressed or depressed and then we see everybody else is like it as well so i call it the elephant's handbrake right mm -hmm. um we get to a point where we have learned helplessness so we learn that everybody else is stressed anxious and depressed so that's just the way it is and like you yeah. say we'll stop asking for help right mm -hmm. uh, i was just really lucky that i'm a natural born problem solver and i'm as stubborn as they come and for once that was on my side when i had to resolve my own problems instead of jumping off beachy head
Mm. Um, and the universe kicked in and went, oh, he's looking for problems, so let's give him the solutions he's looking for. Because the, the intelligence of the universe, as I call it, whatever you want to call it, it looks at us walking around. If we're walking around thinking, I'm going to lose my job, I'm going to lose my job, it just says, well, he keeps asking for it, so let's give it to him, right? Yeah. One that's yeah. looking around, walking around saying, I want solutions for stress, anxiety, and depression. Well, that's what he asked for. Let's give it to him, right? Yeah. It doesn't distinguish between positive or negative. Whatever you're holding in mind eventually comes about. Yeah, spot on, spot on. So how do people get hold of you again, Julian? Uh, so happyonionliving.com. Um, there's a button on there where you can watch the intro video, which is my story. And then and there's a button on there where you can book a, a free call. Um, so if anybody wants immediate help with themselves or somebody they love, right, um, young adults, teens, whatever, the only thing you ask is that the person that wants the help actually wants the help um, because we all want things for people we know, but until they're ready, it's not going to happen. So mm -hmm. you can book a, a free chat and we'll have a chat and we're super rushed for each other. And um, there's some free videos on the website as well. as a, There's a free help page with some videos explaining, you know, the volcano and the thoughts and feelings and stuff. Um, so yeah, if anybody wants, oh, my phone number's on there. So if you're old fashioned like me, just pick up the phone and give us a shout. <laughs> Brilliant. Julian Robus, the Onion Master, thank you so much for your time today. Thank you for having me, Elaine. It's been lovely speaking with you.